Here's an LED headlight that has an interesting feature that I don't think is very common. Today, I'm going to do a full review and lux test on this Aurapola LED headlight and show you what that feature is. Stick around. Hello everyone and welcome to Carlight Reviews. If you've never been here before, I perform consistent automotive light tests to help you make the best purchase decision. And when I choose lights to review, I look at a few things, among others. First, I take a look at what some of you are suggesting in my comments, and I appreciate all the suggestions that I get. And second, I look at the overall quality of the light. You don't want me to just review junk that I end up not recommending over and over again. You want to know what you can buy that you'll be happy with. And third, I look for any unique features that sets them apart. Otherwise, you guys just might get bored. Now, as you probably know, there's a lot of LED light companies out there, and that's why I made this channel. And this light jumped out at me for a very particular reason. After I do the usual introduction and unboxing and go over the published specs, I'll show you what that unique feature is. And then, like my other LED light tests, I'm gonna test the brightness and light pattern for both projector and reflector housings to see how it performs. So let's take a look. Comes with anti-static gloves. A poster style instruction manual. Looks pretty thorough. You may not need it, this is plug and play. Some double-sided tape, although I'm not sure what for because this does have an internal driver, but you can always use some of them. It's got this QR code right here if you need service, which is nice to know. All right, here it is. Now let's go over the published specifications. 20 watts each, 7,000 lumens each, a color temperature of 6,500K. The chip and the IP rating, I could not find any information on, so I'm just gonna have to say it's unknown. The hour rating is a typical 50,000. It does not have an adjustable collar. It does have a fan for heat management and an internal driver. And the warranty on it is two years, and the price at the time of this video before discounts is $39.99 a pair. Let's take a bit of a closer look at this one. Now, as you can see, this is a standard all-in-one design. It's pretty simple. And I do notice that it has these openings right here on the side, as well as an open top. A lot of times lights don't have these, and it has like a cap style design on the top right here. And that's, that's rather unique to this light, but it's not the most interesting part, which I'm gonna to get to here now. Now I'm told that Arupola was founded in 2006, so about 16 years of experience in the field of LED lighting, and they have 120 innovation patents. This next part is one of them. This unit here has a single piece main housing. From here to here is all one piece. It's a patented design, which means there's less parts to connect everything together, and this is also said to equal less heat buildup between the LED and the cooling fan, which of course is intended to decrease light reduction over time and increase longevity. Now I wanna see this, so I'm gonna take this one apart. Got a little rubber gasket right there. I want to be careful, I don't want to rip it. And there you see it. This is one piece from right here all the way down through this section right here and into the heat sink. All one piece. Now I'm unsure if other lights have the same design uh, I never really looked until this one caught my eye, but this is patented, and I will be looking at the lights I test in the future to see if the, any of them do have this feature. It's pretty neat overall. And now that we see what sets this apart, how does it compare in terms of brightness and output accuracy to the other lights that I've tested? Well, I'm gonna put this back together and we're gonna find out. Here's what I use and how I use it when I perform my LED headlight tests. For projector testing, I made a test rig using a 2017 Toyota Camry H11 headlight projector. And for reflector testing, I use an H11 headlight from a 2018 Ford F-150. I use these specifically because they are among the best-selling vehicles in America for over 20 years and are the most common on the road. I'll power the lights using a benchtop power supply, and I'll position the lights hotspot onto a lux meter that is 20 feet away, mounted on my garage door. 
I'll record the initial brightness and then again after 27 minutes to document how well the light manages heat. I use 27 minutes because that's the average commute time in the United States. My tests aren't for Lux number accuracy, but for comparison to a stock H11 halogen bulb, which measures 725 projected Lux and 910 reflected Lux using my test method. Different tests in different environments will give you different results. So if you want to do the same tests of your own, I list all of the equipment I use in the description of this video. All right, got it back together. It's pretty easy. I did use my Fantic NDX L1 screwdriver. This thing is awesome to have around the shop for just about anything you need, even household use. I'm going to put a link to the description of another video I did on my other channel where I tested it. You got to check this thing out. So now, before I get to my testing, I'd like to mention that if you found this video helpful, valuable, or entertaining, you got to visit my Patreon page and learn how you can support this channel and help me make more videos for it. You can support this channel for as little as $1 a month. That's it. And here's a hint. If you support this channel, I take the suggestions to test certain lights a bit more seriously. Keep that in mind. Now, let's see how the Arupola LED headlight performed in my testing. For the projector, I measured 1,023 lux. That's 298 over the halogen 725 lux. And after 27 minutes, it retains 84% of that light output, making it 862 lux, or 137 over halogen. Now, 84% is slightly above the average light retention of the lights I've tested so far. And looking at the projector light pattern compared to stock, it does have a higher than average cutoff line in relation to that hot spot, so be sure to aim them really carefully. And it does have a couple of common fuzzy areas right here. But what is very interesting to me is this area right here. It is usually very, very weak in the lights that I've tested, but this Arapola light fills it nicely, and I wonder if it doesn't have something to do with those notches in the sides that I showed you earlier, as well as that open top. If that is the case, it does the job. And for the reflector, I measure 1,740 lux, or 830 over the halogen 910 lux, and after 27 minutes, it is reduced to 1,466 lux, or 556 over halogen, keeping that 84% light output over time. Now looking at the reflector light pattern compared to stock, I see some weakness right here, but it is a bit fuller right here. This light doesn't do too bad in a reflector, but that low hot spot or high cutoff line does make some potential aiming challenges and might not have as much distance as other lights. Now, as mentioned, there is a published rating of 20 watts per light, and I observed 20.1 watts, the first time I've measured higher than published on this channel so far. Now for heat management, did that one piece design help? Well, I think so, because after 27 minutes, my laser thermometer recorded 110 degrees Fahrenheit for the main unit at the hottest point. That makes this light the coolest running light I have tested so far. It seems that perhaps that one piece design does work because this does do a very good job at managing heat. Now this is a neat light. It seems that that patented one piece design of it might indeed help with heat management. Now I do plan to give awards in a special video at the end of the year to some of the lights that I've tested throughout the year. And if I were to give an award for the one with the best expected longevity, at least as it stands right now, I think this would take it. And stay tuned to future videos to see if another light comes along that runs cooler. Now brightness on the Aeropola isn't bad. The light pattern is decent other than the low hot spot. And I am impressed with how it fills the lower portion of the middle area on my projector test. Let me know what you think of this light in the comments. Now as with all my videos, links to where you can buy this are in the description. If I've got any coupon codes to save you money, I'll include them there as well. And you can also find a link in the description to a free spreadsheet that I update with every video release that shows the specs and results of all the lights I've tested so far, so you can compare this light to the others in one easy view and help you make the best decision. And once again, check out my Patreon page, learn how you can help me make more videos for this channel, and you can get some car light review items as my thanks. Check it out. And if that's not, not something you want to do now, at least subscribe, hit the bell, and let me know you want to see more. If you have a suggestion on what I should test in the future, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to check into it. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you find the right lighting upgrades for your needs so you can enjoy your car more. Keep your headlights aimed, drive safely, responsibly, and respectfully.